Hi students, here are some tips and tricks for obliques, because I know sometimes questions about obliques can be a little confusing depending on the wording. So here's just some tips that I have for you. Um, so oblique positioning simply means that the patient is in some version of a degree of turning away from or towards from the starting anatomical position, which you already know. You know, you know your anatomical position is straight on, palms out facing in front of you. An oblique will have a specific name. So RAO, LAO, RPO, things like that. The name is the trick. It's identifying which part of the body is actually closest to the IR. So RAO, the right anterior side of the body is touching the IR versus LPO, where the left posterior side the body is touching the IR. The middle letter, either A or P, is telling you whether the anterior side is touching or the posterior. And then the first letter, R or L, is telling you the side. It's either the right anterior or, say, left posterior. These first two letters are the key there. The O just means they're an oblique. There's also a designated degree or range of degrees for that body part. So oblique elbow is, say, 45 degree oblique, where Mortise ankle has a range, so 15 to 20. Um, and making sure you're actually in those specific degrees or that range is important. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But also directional terms, it'll either be a medial or lateral oblique or internal external. This is indicating which way the body apart is turning from that original anatomical position. Anterior obliques are also referred to sometimes as PA obliques. So the patient is PA, but their anterior is touching the IR. So the names will be RAO or LAO. So this patient, their right side is touching the IR. This is right anterior oblique versus left anterior oblique. Left is touching. Again, they could be an upright oblique. They could be a recumbent oblique like we have here, but the letters is what is important. So RA means the right anterior is closest. That means the left is pulled away, then vice versa. LA, left anterior towards, the right will be pulled away. Posterior oblique, or the patient's in an AP, oblique. Again, the names are what is touching. So LPO, left posterior. You'll see this patient here, the left side of his back or posterior is touching the IR versus this one where the right is. This one's the RPO. Again, they could be upright or recumbent. The concept is still the same. So left posterior, left posterior touches, right posterior, right posterior touches. So these letters are the key, but watch out because posterior obliques, but the patient will be AP. And remember this AP is the path of the beam. The beam is entering anterior, exiting posterior, but the oblique is a posterior oblique because the posterior part of the body is touching. Here's an example. All right, C-spine obliques, you can do them PA or you can do them AP. If it says PA axial oblique, this is technically an anterior oblique because when you're PA, that's the path of the beam, posterior, anterior. But the position, their anterior is touching the IR. So this one is a RAO because the right anterior is touching versus the AP axial oblique. This is a posterior oblique because his posterior portion of his body is touching the IR and here it's LPO. So just, just watch how it, the question is worded. If it calls it an anterior oblique, we have to say that is telling me what's touching the board. My patient's actually PA. Um, medial or internal. So if it's a medial oblique, it might also be referred to as an internal oblique. This is saying whatever the body part is, it's rotating into or closer to midline 
from anatomical position. So we do a medial oblique foot where we rotate towards the medial portion of the foot. There's medial oblique ankle, medial oblique elbow. These are also referred to as internal obliques. So these two words can be interchangeable versus the lateral or external obliques. You are rotating away from anatomical position. So that oblique elbow where you rotate out, your um, external oblique knee, external oblique ankle, things like that. You're rotating away from your anatomical position. So just remember lateral oblique is the same as external oblique. Here's just two examples for the elbow. Um, this one has both options. It'll have a medial in oblique elbow or internal and a lateral oblique or external oblique. These two demonstrate different areas of anatomy free of superimposition. And that's why it's important to know which position you're in to demonstrate that specific anatomy. If you're looking to demonstrate um, the coronoid process, you would do the internal oblique. If you're looking to demonstrate the radial head, neck, and tuberosity free of superimposition, you're going to use the external oblique. So remember, external goes with lateral, medial goes with internal. Degree is key. Um, so the amount of oblique that you do is important. If you're not in the proper degree of oblique, what you're trying to show will not be properly demonstrated. If it's a joint space, the joint space probably isn't going to be open completely. If it's a bony area of anatomy, it might still be covered up or superimposed. Most of the time we're trying to see something that's either closed on an AP or lateral or superimposed. So we need the oblique view to demonstrate this area more clearly. And so make sure you know, look through your Bond Trigger or your Merrill's book and document or make flashcards say on degrees of oblique. Is it 45? When in doubt, most are 45, but um, is it 15 to 20? Is it 30 to 45? Is it 45 to 60? What's the range? That way, when you make this exposure, if it's not looking correct, look at your degree of oblique. Do I need to go more? Am I too oblique? Do I need to go less? Something like that. Um, so just an example here of that internal oblique elbow. Um, when well positioned, right, we should see this coronoid process of the ulna free of superimposition. If you are not oblique enough, it'll be superimposed, but also if you oblique too far, you'll notice this image is starting to look like a lateral elbow. So they went too far past the 45 point. Now they're um, in a different position. So we need to make sure that we're in the correct um, positioning degree to make sure we're seeing the anatomy that we need to see. Here's an uh, ankle example. We have two oblique options for ankle. We have the mortise, which is a 15 to 20 degree internal rotation that will open the mortise joint. So this, these three areas should be open on your mortise joint, but the distal tib fib joint is closed. On the medial oblique with a 45 degree oblique, this one over here, we should have an open distal tib fib joint, but you'll notice this mortise um, connection point is now closed. If this image all the way on the side here is supposed to be a mortise oblique, that would be incorrect. It's oblique too much. That mortise joint is not open on this inside here. So they would have to bring that ankle back closer to that 15 to 20. So what is my protocol? What degree of oblique? What should be open? when you make your exposure, is what's supposed to be open, open? If not, this patient, they should probably dorsiflex the toes and rotate them back. A little bit less of an oblique to open up that joint space. If this is supposed to be a 45, well, then we have accomplished what we needed to accomplish. But just make sure you know your degrees. Upside, downside 
farthest closest. Um, these I know are sometimes confusing words when we're trying to figure out what should we be seeing? And usually this is um, specific to spine obliques or GI obliques. So are we seeing the area that's closest to the IR or the one that's farthest away from the IR? Or are we seeing downside, upside? So your downside is the one that's closest to the IR or the upside is the one that's farthest away. Um, so we'll kind of look through some of those examples to try and help you with that. Just remember, RAO is an anterior oblique, but the patient is PA. The right anterior will be down and closest. So in this oblique, the right side would be the downside or the closest to the IR versus the left side would be the farthest or the upside because it's away from the IR. LAO would obviously be the reverse, left side down, because left anterior is touching. So this would be your closest or downside. The right side, see how it's pulled far away, is the upside or the farthest. Why do I show you this? Mainly for spine, or we could say ribs or, um, GI things. Here's POs. So LPO, left side is down or closest. Right side's pulled away. That's the upside or farthest. RPO will be obviously the reverse. Right side is down, downside closest. Left side is up, farthest upside. We'll go with flexures first for our example. So in barium enema, Obliques, we can either do posterior obliques or anterior obliques. They demonstrate the flexures just a little bit differently. And with all the obliques, posterior will show one, say downside. If the posterior shows the downside, the anterior shows the upside. They're always going to be opposite of each other. This is posterior oblique barium enema. The obliques are used to open up the flexures in the large intestine. Posterior obliques show the opposite side or the side up or side farthest from the IR. So we have to know this patient is in an LPO. It would demonstrate the right hepatic flexure because if left side is down, right side is up. And if we know posterior obliques show the side upside or farthest, we have to know that it's going to show the right side, the right hepatic flexure. Um, I have this tip here. It's poop. Posterior oblique shows the opposite side, if that helps you. Well, if posterior shows the side up, anterior is going to show the side down. So she's in an anterior oblique here. She's in an RAO. Her right anterior is touching the table. The right side or the anterior obliques will show the side closest or the side down. RAO will then show the right because that's the side down. LAO will show the left. <laughs> I was taught to go with the letters AO means always open. So I know RAO means the right is always open because that's how I memorized it. Just if it helps you a little word association. Same with spine. So cervical spine obliques, right? We can do a posterior oblique or an anterior oblique. And just remember, if the question asks you about a PA axial C-spine oblique, that's your anterior oblique. PA oblique is your anterior oblique. These oblique C-spine views are used to demonstrate their intervertebral foramina. When the patient is PA, or an anterior oblique, so LAO or RAO, it's gonna demonstrate the side closest to the IR or the downside. So RAO shows the right because see he's RAO, right anterior is touching. If I'm seeing downside, I'm seeing the right. If we were to flip LAO, I would see the left. You're also gonna do a 15 to 20 caudal angle, that angle's down. And so we're on an anterior oblique, 
we're seeing the closest foramina, and that's these circles here, these intervertebral foramina. Let's go to the other side, the apaxial oblique. These are your posterior obliques because your patient's AP and the posterior is touching the IR. These are going to show the upside or the side farthest. So RPO, when you're RPO, your left side is pulled away from the IR, right? RPO means right posterior is down, left side is away or the upside. LPO will be the opposite. You're also going to switch now to a 15 to 20 cephalad angle. The angles are going to flip. If you normally angle down for a PA, you then would angle up for an AP. And that's pretty common for most of those. So AP axial C-spine or posterior obliques show the foramina farthest, so FF. We'll go to lumbar spine, another similar concept. Um, lumbar spine obliques show you the zygopophyseal joints. That's the joint space in between the um, superior articular process and the inferior articular process of the vertebrae. Those Z joints, you can either do them um, prone obliques or PA, or you can do supine or AP obliques. When your patient is prone, their anterior obliques, so either REO or LAO, we are going to see the upside Z joints, that's the side farthest, versus if they're AP like this or supine, you're going to see the Z joint closest. So RPO will show you the right Z joint because that's the joint, that's the side of the body that's down. LPO will show the left, it's going to be opposites. Um, so for oblique lumbars, it's a little bit different than oblique C-spines and making sure you go through those concepts is important. I actually recommend only memorizing one. Choose one to memorize for your obliques. Know what posterior lumbar spine obliques show. Know what posterior C-spine obliques show. Choose either supine or prone BEs. And if you memorize one, just know that the if you flip them over, it's going to be the opposite. If one shows side closest, one is going to show side farthest. Okay, so keep that in your in your pocket. Um, so right, just some quick recap of what we covered today. The obliques, the name is important. It's telling you what side is touching the image receptor. So you're able to visualize what position your patient is in. And don't be afraid to kind of put yourself into that position to kind of have a visual in your brain as well. The degree is important. Watch out for over or under rotation because then you won't be able to fully demonstrate um, the position that you're trying to go into. Direction, remember medial means internal where lateral is external. And then what am I looking for? The oblique is usually for a reason. Am I showing what I need to show? Is that joint space open? Is that anatomy free of superimposition? If it's not, then I need to kind of critique myself and my positioning and either go more rotation or less. And also knowing if I'm seeing the one farthest or upside from the IR and closest downside, because that's usually how the um, questions might be asked. And so, you know, what am I seeing? Which side am I seeing? Is it the one that's away or is it the one closer? And so I'm hoping uh, this was helpful for you in your learning of oblique 